Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're gonna be looking at the quest system. We're here already in VR and we are reusing the merchant scene that we had before for the dialogue. And you'll see in a second why. So let's first interact with the merchant. As before, here you can see everything is going as usual, but if we check here in the hierarchy, the player here now has a quest tracker. And the editor is set in debug mode, so you can see here that the quests inside the quest tracker are zero for now. And as we go with the dialogue with the merchant, say yes, I want to talk, go through the talk with the merchant, and then now we have one quest here. The quest is called a log collector. So let's see what that is about. Well, the quest is called let's collect some logs, and the objective is to collect 10 logs. And currently it is not complete. It has here an item requirement of logs, and we require 10 of them. So that's the quest. If we go here to the player inventory, we see that we have five logs, which is definitely not enough for the quest. So let's say that we make this 10. Now bam, quest complete. You can see here in the console, complete the quest, let's collect some logs. Cool, so let's look at how that's built. As you saw before, the player, on top of having this dialog state that we did the last video, now it has a quest tracker script here. And here has a number of properties. First is uh, how much we're waiting between quest validation. This is so that we're not checking for quest completion every frame. So we have this as a couple of seconds wait. And then since this quest system is based on collecting items, that may be regular items like you saw for the logs, or it may be quest items that only appear once. But since we're tracking based on items, we are tracking inventories here. And for now, we have only one, which is the regular player inventory, but in the future we can have a secondary inventory here. It could be the key items inventory or the quest item inventory, where we could store items that are exclusively for quest tracking. And then we have a non-quest complete event here that we're currently simply using to display this quest complete text in the debug text that you saw before but we could use this to trigger some sort of UI change or some kind of celebration that you've completed the quest. And as you saw in the demo, this quest is added by the dialogue. So here we have, if you remember from the previous video where we were looking at the dialogue system, at the end of this talk dialogue, we have the ability to trigger a number of things. And we've added here a new action to trigger that is the assigned quest action here and we're assigning the log collector quest. So that's how everything is set up in the Unity editor. Let's look at the code and see how that is built. So first of all, we have here the quest object. This is a scriptable object that we're using to define the quests. And as you saw before, we have a, a name here that we're using to for it to be the sort of title of the quest. And here we have the title, let's collect some logs. Then we have a specific objective that we're going to be using in the UI where we're telling the player what the quest is really about. And for the example that I have here, we have, hey, the objective is to collect 10 logs. We have a boolean here where we're tracking whether the quest is complete or not. And then we are reusing the item requirements that we had for the build system. Here we're using them to track if the quest is complete. But they work in a very similar way where every item requirement, it defines what item you need and how many of them you need. So that is the quest object. If we go into the quest tracker, you can see here simply by the using statements that is a bit more complex. So in the quest tracker, we have a callback here that we're using for whenever we complete the quests. For now, it's only hooked up to this on quest complete event, but we can later use it, this callback to hook into other systems so we can know when other quests are completed. For example, if we want to on a specific quest complete to advance the dialogue with a number of NPCs, we could hook into this callback and use that to update the dialogue state in the player. Then as you saw, we have a waiting period between checking the validity of the quests. As I mentioned, this is only so that we're not checking if the quests are complete every frame. Then we have uh, an array of inventories here. If we want to have multiple arrays to check, as I mentioned, we could have a regular inventory for items and a separate inventory for quest items or key items. So here we can track which inventories we want to look into for validating the quests. And then we have two private lists here. One is the quests and the other is the tracked quests. For now, we're only using the quest lists. The idea here is that we will have a separate list of which quests we're actually tracking so we can display them in the UI differently. For example, if the player 
has 50 quests. We don't want the player to be scrolling through all of them. So we want to separate them both in complete and incomplete. Or we may want to highlight specific ones or let the player highlight which quests they're currently working on and have those appear at the top of the list, for example. And we could do something similar by simply adding a tracked boolean to the quest object, which is a different implementation for now. I'm keeping them as separate lists, but we could change that in the future. Okay, so when we start the quest tracker, we want to make sure that the quest and track quest lists are initiated or initialized, and then we set up this callback to trigger the on quest complete event that we had before. And then we start this coroutine to continuously validate if the quests are complete. Then we have a couple of helper methods here. We're simply creating a copy of the quest list and the track quest list in case we want to access them outside of the quest tracker. For example, for displaying them in the UI and whatnot. And for now, I'm handling these as copies. There's no possibility of an external class modifying the quests. And then we have the methods that you'd expect. We have we have a few state managing methods here. We have a method to add a quest to the quest list. This is what we're using when we're adding when when we are adding a new quest to the list. And then we have a couple of helper methods to add quests to the tracked list. So we can track and untrack quests this way. And as you can see for all these methods, we are locking the quests lists here. This is important because we are going to be accessing the quest lists here in a separate coroutine and we don't want changes in one of these methods to affect the coroutine because if we change a collection while it's being looped over, it will create an exception and it will bring everything down. But we'll see that when we get to the coroutine, which is right here. So the coroutine itself is just an endless loop where every few seconds here we're validating the quest. And when we're validating the quests, we First define uh, an items dictionary here that we're going to be using so that if we have a ton of quests that basically validate on the same items, we're not constantly accessing the inventory, but this is an early optimization. The main point of the validation here is to loop through all the quests and we're using here the, the link syntax here, but we're basically checking for every quest that is not complete, validate this quest, and then if it's valid, then we mark the quest as complete. Here we're logging that we have completed it. And then we call the callback here for completing the quest. The validate requirements method here, again, loops through all the item requirements inside that quest and then checks this dictionary where uh, if we haven't looked through this kind of item before, which is identified by not having the item as a key, then we start the counter at zero. We go through every inventory that we're tracking and then we get the count of those items in that inventory and add them together. In reality, I don't expect having the same item in multiple inventories. Could happen, but at this point, I don't think that it is going to happen. But having it this way simply allows us not to have to check every inventory separately, but just aggregate the item count across all inventories. And then we store that in the dictionary so that if we are looking for that item again in a different requirement, we don't have to, to look at it now. And then we check if we have fewer of the items as the requirement expects. Then we simply return false, saying that the quest is not complete. And if for all the requirements we have enough items, then we return true, saying that the quest is complete. And that's it for the quest tracker. There are a few changes that happen outside of the quest object here. Now on interact, we are having the player pass the quest tracker component into the dialog tree. This is not a necessary component, so we are only adding it if we have it. And then if we have it, we're keeping a reference here to the quest tracker. And then we have this new method that you saw that's called assign quest, where if we have a reference to the quest tracker, well, if we don't have a reference to the quest tracker and we're calling it, we log an error here. But if we do have a reference, then we call the add quest method in the quest tracker. The only difference here is that we're creating a copy of the quest object. And this is simply to make sure that we are not modifying the original quest object because we may want to have multiples of the same quest or we may want to be able to reset the quest or just in general it makes for a more flexible system if we ha have the ability to have more than one copy of the same quest or for example if we at some point want to have multiple players in the same universe then we could give them the same quest and not have that not have one player finishing the quest affecting the other players anyways 
that simply means that we are here adding a copy instead of passing the object directly. And for any method that we want to use where we're adding quests to the list, we want to make sure that we're making copies. For now, this is the only method that actually ends up adding new quests to the list. So this is the only one that is set up. But if we had any other, it would have to be set up like this. And that is it for the quest system for now. As you can imagine, there's still plenty to do in polishing the system and making sure that it's usable in several situations. But for now, this is working. So let's quickly jump into VR again and see how it's working now that you know how it's built. All right, so here we are again in, in VR, testing the scene. We can interact here with the merchant. And then when we go through the dialog, here you can see that for now we don't have any quests in our list. We go through the dialog and say, yes, I'll take on this quest. And now we have the quest here. Now you can see that the quest is not complete yet and we're required to collect 10 logs. So when we go here, let's say that we have now nine logs, nothing's happening. And then we hit 10 and now bam, the quest is complete. If we go back to the player, we have the quest object, we can check it, now it's marked as complete and it's all good. So cool, that's how that's set up. In next videos, we'll be looking at actually integrating the quest system into the game itself. We're gonna need to build some UI for it and we're gonna need to make some decisions about how the player in general is tracking these quests and how they're getting fulfilled. One thing that we still need to see is for quests that affect state with other NPCs, we're gonna need to figure out a way of setting that connection. Or simply in general, if we wanted to use this for the merchant directly, we need to see how completing the quest is going to affect the dialogue state, for example, so that we can move on for the next time that we talk with the merchant, we can get a different quest. But we'll tackle all of that in a, in a following video. For now, this system is working as expected, which is great, and uh, we'll just continue building on it in the future. And that is all for today. Thank you for sticking around with me. I hope that you found it useful, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.